I'm Two Clicks Philip, and I don't like the new Matrix movie. It was terrible, and I'll say why in this video. Let's dive on in. I've noticed something about the Matrix. If you in any way slight or criticise the series, you will be told that you simply don't get it. I thought I got it. I watched them and I understood the plot. I just failed to see what was so special about it. But that's fine, because for me, the Matrix is all about those action scenes, and the first two movies have some of the greatest I have ever seen. Factoring in the number of times I've rewatched those fight scenes, I can confidently say that I've watched The Matrix as much as anybody, and have indeed had as much enjoyment from it as any other fan has of the series. I just don't watch it for the plot. So the next time I'm told by a Matrix fan that I don't get it, I'm going to do a no you and tell them that they don't get it. Because The Matrix's charm was never about its plot. It was an action movie in a great setting, and it's painfully clear to me that the series has lost its way. Maybe it's its director who doesn't get it. On screen right now is all you need to know about the Matrix quadrilogy. I'm not saying that the series doesn't dabble with interesting philosophical questions, because it does. It's just that only the first movie manages to do this without getting completely bogged down by its own self-importance. It never ground to a halt or had to do some weird U-turn because it didn't know what to do with itself. The first movie knew what it wanted to be, which is something the others did not. But that's fine, because The Matrix is primarily an action series, and the world of The Matrix is a perfect setting for that. The first two movies knew this, and every action scene within them, apart from this one, struck a perfect balance of managing impossible, gravity-defying stunts while still portraying the heroes as being soft, squishy sacks which are just one mistake away from being annihilated by a cold, calculating computer system. I even prefer the second Matrix film to the first, simply because its action scenes are that good. I'm a reasonable man with simple needs. If a Matrix movie has good action scenes, then I'm happy with it, even if the rest of it is full of self-important dialogue about free will and what it is to be human. Yes, I've asked myself the same questions in the shower. It doesn't make my shower profound. But the trilogy fell flat by the third movie, which kind of forgot about the Matrix. And the action scenes we did get were subpar. We got a rip-off of the lobby scene. We got a cringe real-world robot war thing in the middle that's nothing like the Matrix fights we came to see. And then it ends with a Marvel-esque finale where the fighters are made of indestructible rubber until the last punch, which for some reason suddenly inflicts damage and lets the plot move forward again. Rubbish. But I held out hope that this new movie would redeem itself, that it would have learned from its past mistakes. And those first 30 minutes or so were brilliant. How clever, I thought. It's like a reboot, but on a newer, smarter, more devious version of The Matrix that has all sorts of new and clever tricks to try and keep Neo contained. He, like us, suspects that things aren't quite what they seem. He remembers the original trilogy just as well as we do. Yet just when we think he's about to escape, it does something clever to throw him off the scent and to pull him back in again. Even I was doubting what I knew. Maybe, this time around, it isn't even The Matrix. How very meta. Problem is, the movie forgets to stop being meta. Even after Neo has woken up, I couldn't help but feel he was still trapped in a simulation of some kind. Nothing was really connecting like it was supposed to. The characters were off, the humour was off, the fights were off, and the plot was off. Eventually the end credits rolled, and that's when I admitted to myself that the movie had just been a bit rubbish. And believe me, I did not want this movie to be bad. I had grown up with The Matrix. It was THE movie that made everything else seem old and outdated. It ushered in a new age of CGI and possibilities. It influenced my favourite games. Mr. J. C. Denton, in the fresh. And everybody suddenly wanted to dress in black and to look cool. And perhaps most importantly, I knew that if I discussed this new movie with anybody, that I'd have to watch them smugly tell me that I just don't get it again. So a lot was riding on this film not being bad. But it was, so let's investigate why it was so bad. Warning, spoilers coming up. And there were some earlier in this video too. So let's start with the plot, because even an action movie like The Matrix benefits from a plot of some sort. It helps to define the characters, the situation, and to give meaning to the fight sequences. And if I was to quickly summarise the plot of this newest fourth Matrix movie, it actually sounds rather good. The movie first establishes how much more difficult it is to escape this new Matrix. It shows us that Trinity is still in there, and then sets up the rest of the film as a rescue mission of some sort. That leaves plenty of gaps for fights and for the pretentious dialogue they seem to want to cram into these movies. But unfortunately, this movie's plot is not as well defined as the first movie's was. This movie can't pick a horse. It violently jumps between referencing the original and then trying something new, and then back again. But just like when a slice of salami slides off your pizza when you're sat on a nice sofa, it all too often falls down the gap in between to a place you don't want for it to go. Sure, we didn't expect it to pan out the way it did, but that doesn't mean it's good. I do not like this new trend of subverting expectations. 
If you're not going to follow conventional story arcs or predictable narratives, then at least make sure that whatever you're doing instead is worth it, and stick to that, else you end up with a confused mess like the second Fantastic Beasts movie, or the new Star Wars trilogy, or Game of Thrones, or this. Before I can discuss Neo's interactions with Trinity in The Matrix, I must remind you that he looks like this. Yup, The Matrix has trolled him hard by making him appear to everybody else as an old, bald man. And the more I think about that, the danker it is. He's working in a computer company surrounded by 20-something year olds, and he looks like this. And despite that, Trinity, a woman who's already married to a total chad, seems enamoured by him. Evidently a beautiful message that we should look past outer appearances, and at the person trapped inside. So yeah, to summarise, the plot of this fourth Matrix movie sounds okay, about as good as you'd want from a Matrix reboot, but it's poorly told, massively convoluted, and it flits between serious and jokey meta so often that nothing it does matters anymore, and I cease to care. There are no rules the Matrix, or indeed this movie, needed to follow. Speaking of which, hierarchy. This is such an important element in The Matrix. Take the first two movies, there was a clear hierarchy. You had random plebs at the bottom, then SWAT teams, then you had people like the ship's crew who had escaped the Matrix and could bend its rules. Above that were the agents and exiles, then high, high above that was Neo. And this hierarchy made the Matrix. It established the rules of engagement, and helped the audience understand the stakes and risks the characters were taking. Every fight helped to tell a story, it helped to establish this hierarchy and the fights were exciting because they were unbalanced. We all remember that toilet fight between Morpheus and the Agent because we knew the odds were stacked against him, but we understand why he did it, and it made us care more for that character. And throughout that first movie, Neo got progressively stronger and more confident in his abilities until ultimately he became the one. Spoiler alert. But what excellent character development that was. The second movie was not such a good movie, but I still prefer watching it, and have probably seen it more than the first one because its fight scenes were that good despite them being at a disadvantage because the characters and the hierarchy had already been established. But that's the beauty of the second movie, because it knew this, and rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, it instead just had a lot of fun with the existing hierarchy. And I love every fight scene in that movie. I love how they managed to keep Neo looking overpowered while still finding fun situations for him to fight in. That scene where he smurfs against a few agents at the beginning is exactly what fans of the first movie needed. Pay off that he is now far beyond their abilities. That fight with the swords in the fancy room is a damned work of art, where Neo again gets the chance to lord it over a bunch of high tier baddies, while the rest of the group have to fend for themselves on the highway, which remains one of my favourite action scenes of all time and, on its own, is still enough to justify the existence of the second Matrix movie for me. Hear me out here, even that infamous playground sequence with all of the smiths was fun and helped to establish in the hierarchy that one smith doesn't stand a chance, but that an army of him does. But yes, it was a silly scene, but also very fun. Now, let's take a look at this new film, and there's no such hierarchy in sight. It doesn't bother to establish one, so I'm left assuming that it's going to be the same as in the original trilogy, but then because of that I'm left confused as to why Neo struggles to fight Agent Smith again, and even the ship's crew seem perfectly balanced against the exiles in that warehouse fight. There's no sense of threat from them. It's not like the sort of fight scene where people die, it's just there for spectacle, but as I'll talk about later on, it fails at even that. The one attempt they had at introducing something new to the hierarchy was at the end of the movie where they featured the Swarm which was made out to be some terrifying threat, a party trick of the new Matrix iteration, and yet not a single person died. People were literally swarmed by these things and they got away just fine. Well done Matrix, you introduced a new enemy and you made them appear totally toothless. Nobody died, not even those throwaway characters who were obviously just there to die. Even those low ranked SWAT guys chalk up a few wins in the first movie thanks to their numbers. So what excuse does the swarm have for being so inadequate? And how can I take a Matrix movie seriously when nobody in it dies, even when they really should have done? From what I remember, they even joked about this earlier on about how they were just going along to die. This movie is so self-aware, apart from apparently how bad it is for not conforming to these conventions. But yeah, that swarm was useless and there was no tension in that sequence. It would have been much better had they been swapped out for an agent instead. Do you remember that deja vu moment from the first movie, where all of the windows turned to brick and that poor guy got mowed down by the SWAT teams? Yes, of course you remember that because it was awesome and there was a true sense of fear. I watched that scene as a child and I was horrified by it. And the same when they were betrayed and like half the ship's crew were killed. There were real shocking consequences in that first movie. It was stuff that helped to establish a threat and a sense of vulnerability. And this new movie had none of that. Child Philip wouldn't have been horrified by this one at all. He wouldn't even have been mad. 
just disappointed. There is something off about the fights in this new movie. I could just feel it when I was watching them, even though I'm still unable to pinpoint what exactly it is. The camera shots seem shorter, more zoomed in and shakier. There isn't so much of a rhythm to the fight, nor such perfect harmony between the action and the music. The music this time around sounds like regular fight music, but in the older movies, they seemed tailor-made for every kick, punch and rest. And perhaps most damning of all, the fights in this new movie don't seem to have any purpose other than to exist because the movie feels obliged to have them. And there were always so many things going on, so many people flailing about fighting so many other people. It made me appreciate how focused the ones in the older movies were. Especially in the first two movies, there was always a focus to the fight. Even that Agent Smith one with hundreds of people was manageable because it all centred around Neo as a singular entity. But in this movie, our attention is always torn across half a dozen places at once. Neo fighting Agent Smith in the first movie was a huge event. It was such a defining moment, and they gave it 100% of the audience's focus by making it very clear that there would be no backup, no rescue, and no distractions. It was our sole focus, and the movie had been building up to that key moment for the best part of two hours. But here it was done halfway through the movie, and feels like it was done just for the sake of it, because it didn't achieve very much, and it wasn't even the focus because another fight was also raging on above. It splices clips from the first movie into these fight scenes, but for me it merely hammered home just how lacklustre these new scenes are in comparison. It stuns me that the Matrix, even when it's trying to recreate a previous Matrix scene, manages to be so unmatrixy. Even the third film, which didn't have much of the Matrix, felt more matrixy than this imposter. Perhaps I just don't get it, because I don't understand what other people see in the fight sequences in this movie when they say that they're good, because they aren't. They're awful. Yes, we get some action. But no, it isn't good action. The fights in the original trilogy felt like they belonged in movies. The ones in this one would be better off in a Netflix TV series. Taking the time to make this video, and believe me, take time it did, has helped me to discover something new about how I see the first Matrix movie. It used to be all about that lobby fight for me. It was cutting edge, the stunts were awesome, and the slow motion was breathtaking. As far as I was concerned, that was the iconic scene that the movie would be remembered for. But I don't see it that way anymore. In fact, from that movie, it's the action scene that I watch the least these days. And I think it's because it doesn't progress the plot at all. It's spectacle for the sake of spectacle. And while I think it does it a hell of a lot more stylishly than the new movie does, it's an action sequence that's empty in a similar way. And now when I watch it, I'm just left thinking, those poor security guards. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. At least the first movie was proud of that scene. In comparison to that, it feels like this new film gets tired of its own action sequences about halfway through them. Like it had to go through the motions before it could carry on with its self-important dialogue that it seems to love so much. And then, just as I thought it couldn't get any worse, it does this. I dedicated a chapter of this video to talk about Neo's force push move because it double-handedly ruined the fights for me. They were already ruined by the sloppy combat, but to end them all with a force push move is unforgivable. Let's take a look at the first time it took place in this film. Pew. Now I didn't think there was anything wrong with the force push ability in that instance. I actually liked it there. It was a spectacular way to show that this movie wasn't just going to slowly retread the first movie's story at every turn. It showed how powerful Neo already is. But then he does it again and it ruins another fight sequence. And then another! Force push quickly stopped being cool and quickly became this lazy gimmick that was cringe to watch and probably for him to perform. Well, I know. Yeah, it's cringe. It's really cringe. I hate, I hate myself. How anybody could have seen that and thought it had a place in a Matrix movie is beyond me. What a sloppy way of showing in a Matrix movie that they don't want to make a Matrix movie. Just a, a Harry Potter hand wave and all Neo's problems are sorted. Bullets stopped. Rockets deflected. Enemies launched away. Cars crushed so you can just drive right over them. Now Keanu Reeves is older now, I get that, but he's also John Wick and he's great in those movies. So I don't think it's him, and even if it was, if he's not capable of Matrix fights then you don't make a Matrix movie with him as the protagonist. His force push move stinks. And I hate it. Oh god it's gone moldy. Let's talk you through the characters in this new movie. I liked Bugs. 
she seemed kind of cool until she was swapped out for Trinity or became Trinity or something like that and then the movie just kind of hid her away from the rest of it. And I like Chad too. Big props to whoever called him Chad, because his name is the first that I've remembered in quite a while. In The Matrix there's Neo, there's Trinity, Morpheus, Agent Smith and Chad, along with Neil Patrick Harris. He was great for his role and I will say that I enjoyed the scenes with him in. I expected to hate the new Morpheus, but I am totally indifferent towards him. It feels like he has been assigned an impossible role and he kind of does it as best as he can. And then he turns into a load of balls. This has got to be the lowest stake jump scene in any movie ever. He is literally a load of floating balls, he has wafted through a vent to get here. So do we honestly expect him to fail this jump? To summarise, the new Morpheus is a load of balls and is okay I guess. But the new Agent Smith I despise. I had to rewrite this section of the video because the original script was flat out nasty. I was disgusted with myself, I sounded genuinely spiteful spouting concentrated venom at this poor actor who was given the impossible job of replacing Wego Huving. But there's no beating about the bush, this new guy is terrible. Agent Smith has gone from being a looming presence on screen to being one of the most generic low budget American sitcom bad guys imaginable. The way he looks, the way he talks, the way he moves, everything about him is horrible and not in a way that's good for a villainous character. Every time he was on the screen, this, this $200 million blockbuster movie transformed into a generic American TV show. I can't even put my finger on why this happened, or why I detest him as much as I do. It's irrational, but I don't like him and I can't help it. Maybe it's because he's American, maybe subconsciously, I like English actors and dislike American ones. But I do have a special dislike for the new Agent Smith. It's uncalled for and I can only apologise to the actor who I now hate for a reason I can't even explain properly. It's a real shame this movie sucked so hard, because it teases at so many interesting concepts but it does nothing with them and then quickly moves on to the next. The robot civil war sounds cool, so it was shown in one clip and then never spoken of again. Modals or matrixes within matrixes? That sounded cool too. Friendly synths could have been great, but instead they're just a taxi service that occasionally emits a stupid sound. Or how about the fact that the matrix brought back Agent Smith of all people, despite his history of betraying his makers, which, spoiler alert, he does again. They went out of their way to bring back this specific character, even if it meant using a different actor and using the character to fulfil a different purpose than he did in the original trilogy. Why? Actually no, I don't want to know, because there will be a line of fans ready to explain why these things are the way they are to me, but it doesn't change the fact that these explanations are nothing more than flimsy excuses to hastily fill a distracting plot hole. I know it was never explained specifically, but from the original trilogy I got the impression that each iteration of the Matrix had a different one, but this movie goes to great lengths to explain that it's the same Neo brought back to life and physically repaired for some reason. And Trinity too, she's brought back to life as well, but how? The way it was done seemed deliberate to open up as many plot holes as humanly possible. Like why should we even care if she dies again if they can just respawn her at will? Stop making plot holes where there doesn't need to be any. It staggers me how poorly this movie utilises the assets from the original trilogy. But one of the biggest offenders for me is that they swapped the iconic phone booths for mirrors. Bad idea. Way to erode on one of the few rules the Matrix has that can be used to crank up the pressure of a scene when all they have to do now is to find the shiny enough crisp packet and they can escape. The rules of the Matrix used to be hard coded and explained beforehand, but this time around the rules are made up as it goes along. We get that embarrassing attempt to fly from Neo to explain why they need to use the bike at the end. Again, never explained why he can't fly when he used to be able to, it seems it's merely shown to try and make sense of a completely stupid chase scene. And oh look, Trinity can fly now for some reason. By that point I was too mentally exhausted to care why. And are we just going to ignore how ridiculous that scene is in the coffee shop at the end? The bit where Neo has to try and convince Trinity to leave the Matrix and somehow fails, despite her remembering her past visions of that exact moment to the policeman lining the walls and to the bizarre way her family comes to collect her. Does this not all register to her as being highly unusual? Are we, the viewers, honestly meant to believe that she's oblivious to all of this, even when she's walking away and then looks back at him getting held down by an army of officers? Clearly the director had an early idea of how this sequence was meant to play out, but it didn't work as intended and it should have quickly become painfully obvious that it needs to be completely revised. It's just a load of nonsense. So I assume all this is done simply to try and inject some tension into the scene. I don't get it, and then as expected she has a sudden change of heart, changes her name and kicks Chad in the face, all making it one of the most poorly executed scenes in cinema history.
the first Matrix introduced us to this brilliant construct that is the Matrix, and it took the time to explain and to show us a lot of cool things within that world. This new film mentions modals, and I was like, oh, well, that sounds interesting, and then it never speaks of them again. And that's how I felt about a lot of this movie. I can split the earlier Matrix movies up into chapters, each with a clear purpose, each quite happy to be what it is, without it having to shoehorn in a hundred layers of meta. This new movie just doesn't seem happy to be what it is. It wants to be something different, but it doesn't know what it wants to become. I don't think it even knows what it thinks we know. It's not happy to explain everything all over again, yet it never stops with its heavy-handed flashbacks to remind us of how clever it is for referencing the original movie again and again and again. This film has no consistency. It feels like a thousand fragmented scenes stuck together. How ironic for a movie that's meant to represent embracing a new identity. Many modern movies seem designed for people with attention deficit, but The Matrix Resurrections feels like it was designed by people with attention deficit. What a shame. The best thing to come from this is that spectacular Unreal 5 demonstration where they recreate my favourite action scene of all time. I sometimes miss this version of us. Me too. This is truly a taste of the future, of a digital world that is creeping towards reality. And what better setting than The Matrix? I saw this in the vague trailers and I hoped that they got The Matrix, but Resurrection shows that they have lost their way. I'm a man with simple tastes, as long as I get some epic action scenes, I'm happy. But I'm not happy, and out of desperation I looked to the rest of the movie for comfort, but found only lacklustre storylines and pretentious subtext. The very fact that the reviews that seem to like this movie spend their whole time talking about the brave trans references shows that there's not a lot else going for it. And don't you dare say that I don't get it. Neo? More like no. Where do they go from here? I suppose this movie opens the way to a trilogy as much as the first movie did, albeit on much shoddier foundations. The execution is terrible. They executed it, murdering any hopes of a new Matrix trilogy dead to me. Because how do you carry on from this? Seriously, what a cluster muck. Even as the credits rolled, I held on desperately to a chance of redemption. Maybe the post credit scene could somehow redeem this movie. Maybe it could all be a dream, where Neo is pulled back into the Matrix by Neo Patrick Harris, telling him that he was suffering a psychotic break. That's the only way this movie could even have attempted to have redeemed itself. And I hate those sorts of endings. But you know what's even worse? the Catrix.